Last year, a star exploded in M101, the pinwheel galaxy. The supernova happened sometime in late April, and I was lucky enough to have imaged M101 a few weeks before the explosion, and then a few weeks after, meaning I was able to see the supernova as it happened. It's now February of the next year, and the start of galaxy season and I thought it would be very cool to revisit M101, the pinwheel galaxy. I'm excited to see how much the supernovas changed over the last 10 months. I also wanted to take the opportunity to compare images taken with and without the SV Bonny UV IR cut filter, as the images that I was able to previously take of galaxies were all shot in broadband without any filters. My name is Chris and welcome to my channel. I ended up having three clear nights, which allowed me to take three different sets of images, which was great. I used my UPP DMAT approach to take sky flats, which uh, I use in place of other calibration frames. Uh, these uh, long exposure sky flats basically uh, have the advantage of taking out light pollution, uh, sensor glow, and any defects uh, and dust motes on the sensor. I missed taking the flats the second night because I thought wrongly that I could reuse the same flats as the first night, only to find that I had some dust motes that had gotten onto my sensor, uh, which I then had to take care of in post-processing. To stack the images, I loaded all three sets of uh, data into different groups in Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, and for that second night that I did not have proper flats, I copied the flats from the first night. Uh, which didn't quite work as well as I'd hoped. Uh, so here's my main group from the first night, and then group one from the second, and the group two from the third night. Uh, and you'll notice that each group has its own calibration flats and nothing else. Uh, after running these through Deep Sky Stacker, I ended up with 187 uh, stacked useful frames. And before leaving Deep Sky Stacker, I also chose the best frames that had the nicest stars and the best stars, and I stacked just a smaller subset of those. And I ended up using the same reference frame as I did for the main set of, of images. That way I could easily recombine the image of the stars with the image of the galaxies, as their size and orientation would be identical. I processed a couple of images in DSS with and without the UPPD matte sky flats just to look at the difference. And you can, you can really see um, what kind of an effect the flats have. So here is an image. Uh, oh, let's bring up. So here is an image uh, of 37 frames, uh, one hour and 51 minutes of an integration time with no flat supplied whatsoever. And if I take this image and I just do a really basic stretch, um, let's pick a dark spot here, we'll increase the local stretch intensity and just stretch this image out. Uh, right, first of all, you can see that you can barely make out the galaxy in the center. Let's just apply that. And now if I remove the uh, background, so I'll do the background extraction. And do another stretch, this time a more localized stretch. Right, you can really see this ring uh, that's caused by, uh, well, a number of factors, but uh, definitely light pollution as it refracts around uh, my dew hood and the inside of the scope. 
So to battle this, um, I've been using these UPPD matte sky flats. And uh, here is now the same one hour and 51 minutes of integration time, but with the sky flats applied. So I'm going to do a similar stretch. I'm going to pick a, a dark area up here, sample that. I'm going to increase the local stretch intensity and just stretch that image out. Right, and first of all, you can see that uh, the galaxy pops right out where we couldn't even see it in the previous image. Now I'm going to run the background extraction. And apply that. And again, I'm going to do another more localized stretch. And I'm really going to push this one, right? You can see a bit of the ring here, but it's not nearly as pronounced as it was. But look how far I've had to stretch the image before uh, we could see that ring. Okay. And uh, here is here is a sample that I took in broadband last year of the Pinwheel Galaxy. And this one used regular flats. So same idea. Let's just uh, quickly grab a corner here. Let's do a quick stretch this way. All right. And then let's do a background extraction. And then we stretch that same image a little further. And you can see that ring. So uh, using regular flats, uh, the light pollution ring is, is definitely there, uh, as well as in this case, some sensor glow. Uh, with, uh, without any kind of uh, calibration frames or flats, we certainly see the ring. But with the UPPD mat uh, sky flats, that ring all but goes away. So uh, in the end, I used UPPD mat and I ran uh, the images through Cyril. And in Cyril, I did a couple of things, uh, much like what I just showed. Uh, but here's a sample of 187 frames. So this is over nine hours worth of integration time across three nights. And the uh, same idea, I would uh, do a generalized stretch, bring that out a bit. That's uh, too much almost. Uh, grab the galaxy here and take uh, a little bit of the image where we can see some of the arms of the galaxy showing. And do a more um, focused stretch, apply that. Now let's remove the green noise in the background. So remove green noise. That's been removed. And now let's take care of the background extraction. Generate, I'm gonna to tone that down a little bit because I don't want the galaxy as part of the uh, background. Let's take that out and compute. So here we go. I've got a couple of artifacts here that I had to take care of uh, in post-processing in GIMP but this was generally my approach. So from here, what I ended up with is uh, a version of this image with the stars removed with just the galaxy, and then another version of the same image now with just the best stars selected in DSS, uh, where I removed the stars, and then I moved all the files over to GIMP for some additional processing. So here we are now in GIMP, and uh, in GIMP, here are my original images. Here we can see the star removal in GIMP. And then here as I'm stacking through, uh, here's a base image. Here's a slightly sharpened version overlaid. Here's a slightly sharpened version on top of that. And then finally, uh, a more finalized version. And then we bring in the stars. And that is... Uh, my image from a couple of days ago. So this is now 10 months after the supernova. What did I find? Well, first of all, 
um, let's talk about the UV IR cut filter. Um, I'll show you guys the comparison of this image uh, and the previous images I've taken. So this image is from uh, the supernova itself from May of last year. And just zooming in on this image, right? You can see the background is very smooth. Here we've got the supernova. The, the galaxy itself uh, doesn't show any color. It's, it's basically just shades of uh, beige. And I'm finding that this is really what I get when shooting galaxies in my Bordelais backyard. So the, the light pollution uh, when shooting in broadband just leaves this type of uh, um, colorless image. It might as well be grayscale. Uh, and here is the image from a couple of nights ago. And this is now 10 months after uh, the supernova. And a couple of things come to light. First of all, we can definitely see much more detail. The, uh, there is much more definition to the detail within the galaxy. Uh, there is color. So we're seeing shades of uh, blue, of red. You can see some nebulosity within the arms, especially around here where the supernova uh, is in that region. There is a bit of nebulosity happening. Uh, so that is great. But the other side effect of this is if I really zoom in here, and this might be just because it's, it's such a um, non-colorized image, but in the UV IR cut version, I've got this uh, salt and pepper red noise that really shows up. And this is with nine hours of integration. Whereas this image here, which has only got about three and a half hours of integration, uh, I'm not seeing that noise. And this is definitely something that stands out with the filter. So for example, here is an image that I took of Triangulum uh, earlier this year, also using the UV IR cut filter. And same thing, you can see uh, a lot, well, you can see some of the color in this image, but if we zoom in, we've got this, this reddish salt and pepper noise. Whereas this is the same image now taken from a darker sky location from uh, where I was up at uh, Starfest in Ontario, uh, which is a Bortle 4 compared to my Bortle 8. And uh, the, the redness is not there in the noise, right? I can still see the noise. It's, it's much uh, more toned down compared to, to what we see here. So uh, thoughts about the UV IR cut filter? I really like it. I, I like how much more definition and detail I get in the images with the UV IR cut filter. I think that's fantastic. Um, the noise is, is there, but I am shooting in difficult light conditions. Uh, the, the images just to me look, look much better. Uh, but it does come at the cost of, of some of that noise. So there we go. Uh, better definition, better color, a little bit more noise with a UV IR cut filter, specifically the SV Bonnie UV IR cut filter. Okay, let's look at the before and after images of the supernova. So uh, to start with, uh, this is the very first image I took of M101 last year, which is slightly out of focus. Uh, this was taken on April 13th. And uh, as we can see here in this arm of the galaxy, that is where we are going to see the supernova uh, in the future. But right now, it's, uh, there is a star here, which again, out of focus, a little bit fuzzy. There's definitely nothing in this lower region here. Now taking the next image, which was uh, about a month and a half later, this is May 29th. And uh, much more in focus, and we can clearly see the supernova right here. It's a very bright object. Uh, that is that star that we saw in the previous image, but that is the, the supernova here. It's absolutely overwhelming the entire region around it. Now here's the image I took a few weeks ago uh, in February, uh, 10 months after the supernova. And this is now with the UV IR cut filter. And look at that. That is not what I was expecting. I honestly expected to see 
uh, a much brighter and broader patch of the supernova uh, potentially for, for years to come. But only 10 months later, all we have left is this, this red uh, remnant right here. Now, I don't know if it's just my eyes, if I'm seeing what I want to see, but I kind of get this, this bit of definition around it. That almost looks like Nebula was pushed away by the supernova. It could be just wishful thinking on my part. Uh, but yeah, there it is. That's, uh, that's the leftover remnant of SN2023 IXF. Pretty cool. So anyway, uh, happy galaxy season to everyone. Thanks for watching and clear skies.